And I was going to a prison not too long ago, and I parked my car outside this prison, and this truck was there. And some of y'all who live in the South see these things all the time. And this truck was like a shrine to the Old South. It had all of these bumper stickers on it. It had the Confederate flags everywhere. It had the gun rock. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I went upside, and there was a white guard standing at the prison door when I got there. And I said, hi, I'm here for a legal visit. And the first thing the man said to me was, you're not a lawyer. I said, oh, yes, sir, I am. He said, I don't believe you're a lawyer. I said, I am an attorney. I've been to this prison before. He said, where's your bar card? When my bar card was in the car, he made me go back to the car to get my bar card. I came back. I felt insulted. I showed him my bar card. I said, look, I want to come inside now. And the man said, all right, all right, but you're going to have to get in the bathroom. I'm going to have to give you a strip search. I'd driven two hours to be there, so I made this difficult decision. I actually went in the bathroom, subjected myself to this humiliating search. I came back out. I was trying to recover some dignity. I said, look, I want to see my client now. He said, well, you've got to go back there and sign the book. I said, lawyers don't have to sign that book. You're coming into my prison. You go back there and sign that book. And so I did. And finally, he took me over to the door, and I was angry. And he got in front of the door and he unlocked the door and I was walking inside to see my client and he grabbed me by the arm and said, wait, let me ask you something. I said, what's that? He said, did you see that truck out there with all those bumper stickers and flags? I said, yeah, I saw that truck. He said, I want you to know that that's my truck. It really antagonized me. I was sitting there waiting for my client to come into. I'd never met this client before and I was sitting there just angry. And the client came in, a young African-American man. I knew he had some uh, mental health problems, but I didn't know much more about him. And this young man came in, he sat down and he turned to me. And the first thing he said to me was, quote, did you bring me a chocolate milkshake? And I thought to myself, this is the strangest day I've had in a really long time. I said, no, I didn't bring you a chocolate milkshake. I'm your lawyer. I'm here to represent you. And I started asking my questions and then I realized he wasn't paying any attention. And so I put my pen down and said, look, I'm sorry. I didn't know you wanted me to bring you a chocolate milkshake. Next time I come, if they let me, I'll bring you a chocolate milkshake. And this man smiled and smiled and smiled. He was terribly mentally disabled, horribly abused as a child. He was in 29 foster homes by the time he was 10 years old. At the age of 13, started showing symptoms of bipolar disorder, but couldn't get any health care, so he started using crack cocaine. By the age of 15, he was showing symptoms of schizophrenia. At 16, he was using heroin. At 17, he was homeless, roaming the streets uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with no help. At 18, he began to have psychotic episodes. And at 19, in the midst of a psychotic episode, he committed a horrific crime. He stabbed someone to death. They arrested him, charged him with capital murder, quickly convicted him, and sentenced him to death. I got the record, and I read through the record, and I couldn't find the words mental health, mental illness, mental disease, anywhere in that record. And finally, it was time to go to court. I was feeling very hopeful because my experts were terrific. We found these witnesses. We went to court. And when I got to court, which was about three hours from the prison, I noticed that the guard, who I hadn't seen since that first encounter, was the guard that had brought him from the prison uh, to the courthouse. The guy was just sitting over there glaring at me. And we had three good days. The judge was listening. I felt good about the case. And about a month after the hearing, I was really feeling hopeful. And I decided to go see this client. And I went down to the prison to, to go see my client. And I parked my car. And I was walking to the prison. And what do I see in the parking lot? That truck. And I was feeling tired. I didn't feel like I had, to, I had the energy to deal with this guy. I said, you know, I don't want to deal with him today. I'm just going to drive back another day. And I actually turned around to go back to my car and just said I was going to come back another day. And as I was going back to my car, I started hearing that song. They used to sing when I was a little boy. They used to sing this song, Can't Let Nobody Turn Me Around, Turn Me Around, Turn Me Around. And that's when I realized I was losing my hope. And I said, no, you can't do that. And so I got my bar card and I turned around. I said, I'm just going to deal with this guy. And I walked up to the door. And sure enough, there was the guard. And when I got into the uh, front of the door, I said, hi, I'm here for a legal visit. Here's my bar card. And the man immediately said to me, he said, hello, Mr. Stevenson, how are you? Completely threw me. I said, I'm fine. I said, I'll go in the bathroom and get ready for your search. He said, oh, Mr. Stevenson, we're not going to do that today. I said, really? Thank you. I said, well, I'll go back here and sign the book. He said, Mr. Stevenson, I saw you coming and I signed you in, completely threw me. I said, well, thank you. He said, yes, sir. And he walked over to the door and I was trying to figure out what was going on. And he says, you know, I gotta tell you something. He said, uh, you know, I came up in the foster care system too. He said, I didn't think anybody had it as bad as I did, but I realized that maybe your client had it worse than I did. He says, I'm a very angry person. Been angry my whole life. He said, but I'm gonna tell you something. He says, I think what you're doing is a good thing. And then he looked at me and says, I hope you keep fighting for justice. I said to him, I said, I can't tell you what that means to me. I said, I can't tell you what that means to me. He said, sir, can I just shake your hand? And I shook his hand. I was completely blown away. And I turned to go inside the prison and he grabbed me by the arm and said, wait, 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 I got to tell you something else. I said, what's that? So I just want you to know I did something on the way back from the courthouse. 
I said, what'd you do? I said, well, I took an exit and I took your client to a Wendy's and I bought him a chocolate milkshake. <laughs>